please stand as we enter into a time of worship. so glad that you are here. Um, if this is your first time here, we want to make sure to get you a drink in our coffee shop afterwards. There's a connect card located in the back of the seat. There's also one online that you can fill out. Be sure to let us know that you're here and fill that out and take it to the drip afterwards and we'll get you hooked up with that. We've got just a few fun things that we want to make sure that you are aware of. Um, refuge Ball. We are already talking about Refuge Ball. The ladies around here get pretty excited about that. It's an amazing women's event that we do. It is scheduled for the beginning of March. And ladies, we have added a third night. We had such an amazing response when we were registering hostesses that um, we decided to add that third night. So we are going to be opening up hostess registration for the Wednesday night starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. It's going to be on the app. Everything you need is going to be on there, so be sure to check that out. We also have baptisms coming up. We get really excited about baptisms. It's such an amazing time for us to hear the way that God is working in people's lives. If you want more information about that, you can also check that out on the app, um, or you can email abbyvogley at thewaterschurch.net, and she can get you some more information. 
Christmas is coming, right? <laughs> and the snow outside helps that a lot. I love that we're already in Christmas songs up here. We have some amazing Christmas services planned for you. Um, you've got the flyers on your seat that go over the different times that they're happening. We hope that you can make it to one. There's lots of different times for you to choose from, so you can plan ahead and see what works for your family. I um, also want to let you know that we are having a special service on the 26th, the Cozy Christmas. Um, there's not going to be services on the 25th, so take that day to spend with your family, and we're going to be having an hour-long family service at 9 o'clock and 1045 on the 26th, so be sure to come back and join us for that on that Sunday. Lastly, I want to let you know that um, we're going to be having a meeting after service for anybody that knows p prayer is powerful. We know that prayer is powerful, right? We know that God wants us to speak to him and he meets us there. So if you want to find out more about that and about um, what is happening in the prayer life here at church and how to be a part of that, I would love to talk with you after services. I'll just be right outside those doors, right by the fireside room. I'll take about 10 minutes of your time and I promise you, you will get excited about it. Um, we're also really excited about Walk Through Christmas that happened. Who got to go to Walk Through Christmas in here? Just raise your hand, let me see. That was a lot of us. Over 4,500 people got to walk through the woods over the course of those days. It was an absolute amazing time. We had so much fun and we just want to thank you all for those that were able to come and those that were able to give in order to make that happen. Um, your faithfulness in giving is just so appreciated and helps us do things like that. There's three ways to give. They're going to be shown up on the screen there so you know what your options are and we just want to thank you for your faithfulness in that. God, as we prepare to enter our hearts to go back into worship, we thank you that you are accessible to us, and we thank you that you are meeting with us this morning. God, in your name we pray. Amen.
Father, we thank you so much for this morning, and just that the roads are slightly more clear than they were this past week, um, and so, uh, Father, we just pray for, for a safe holiday season as we kind of enter into that time of year, and Lord, um, Lord, we know you're with us every step of the way, and, and we pray that you just guide our steps and, uh, and lead us into the, the place where we need to be. blessing today. Sing Amen.
want us to stand for just a second and just sit in this moment and just let that truth that he is for you just wash over you. Sometimes we're so afraid to just sit in the silence, but I encourage you this morning to open up that space for God to speak to you. God, we know that you were here with us this morning. And God, we thank you that we have the ability to hear your voice in our hearts. God, we know that you are for us. God, in those moments when we feel so alone and we feel like the world is against us and like we just can't seem to win, God, we know that you are on our side and that you are always there with us. God, we press into that truth this morning. God, we are excited about that truth this morning. God, you are living and you are active and you are accessible to us and we thank you so much for that. God, we come before you this morning with needs. God, we all have our own needs in here. God, you know the condition of all of our hearts. You know the condition of all of our lives. You know where we're all at. So God, we just want to take a moment and lay those needs at your feet this morning and know that you are a good God. 
who is for us and that we can trust you with that. We can trust you with those deepest, darkest areas of our life, God. And in those moments, you will love us and you will love us completely. God, we want to lift up Pastor Doug and Peggy to you this morning. God, we thank you for the leadership that they offer here at the church. And God, we want to pray for them. God, we want to pray that you refresh them. God, we want to pray that they have vision. God, give them rest. Give them wisdom. God, lead them well as they lead this church. God, we want to pray for Ryan and Hope Summers, a new missionary couple that's serving in Slovakia, working to reach the Roma Gypsy people. God, they need resources. They need people. They need your strength. They need your provision. They need your protection. And God, we're trusting all of that in your hands. And God, we thank you so much for Messiah Lutheran Church. God, we thank you that we have the chance to partner with other churches in this community, to partner with the big church for people that are just chasing after you, Lord. So God, we pray for Messiah Lutheran Church, for Pastor Brady and for his whole team. God, we pray that you give them protection and provision. God, we pray that you also refresh them and give them vision and give them wisdom as they lead people towards you. God, we pray over our pre-K and our kids' ministries. God, as those little ones are learning about you this morning, God, we just pray for patience for the workers. God, we pray for resources for them. God, we pray that their hearts are open. God, we pray for excitement for them as they are falling in love with you and as they are walking closer to you every day. We thank you so much for them. And God, we pray for our services in here this morning. God, we pray over Pastor Rachel as she's preparing to come and share a word with us this morning. God, you have brought us all here together. And like the song that we just sang, God, that this, this generational impact that can happen. God, I thank you for every single person that is in this room or is watching online. And God, we ask for that generational impact, that the choices that we make today can positively impact generations of our family for you. So God, we pray for Rachel as she's preparing to come forward and, and share truth, that you open our hearts to that, that you prepare us for that, and that you remove any distractions that might be vying for our attention right now. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, if you are in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, we're gonna have you head on out those back doors for your service. Everybody else, greet some. Good morning. Do I sound parched? Jingle and jangle. This, oh, hi. I really am not sure how to respond to this right now. Thank you for bringing a little bit of Christmas joy onto the stage. One for me, one for you, I guess. I, are they both for you? I don't know. I mean, hydrate. It's important. All right. Well, that was a fun surprise. <laughs> so as our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders head out, go ahead and say hello to somebody, and you can respond to what just happened with between you right there. That is our version of Pentatonix. <laughs> so um, it, it has a little bit of a like Backstreet Boys in sync throwback, which if you're like me, I love that. You know what I'm saying? So let's go. Um, no, we love our creative team here. We have some of the most creative people. And um, I say if you stand around too long, they will put you in a video. So <laughs> I just keep moving. <laughs> like They can't catch me. Um, so I don't get asked to be in a lot of singing videos. And <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you why. So. 
I'm excited to get to speak this morning. My name is Rachel. I'm one of the pastors here. If you don't know me or we haven't met, um, I get to speak, and we are in our Christmas series called I'm Dreaming, and we're going to have next week, I think we have a new version of I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas that'll open us up, but um, I'm excited to get to share. I love this Christmas season. I love the lights. I love, I just uh, warned my husband last week that like next year, like take this year off, babe, but next year we're going to put lights on our house. And he just was like, okay, sounds good. Uh, But I won't forget. So I will not forget. And next year I plan for that. But I love um, all that comes in this holiday season. And so um, last week, Doug kicked us off and he talked about Elizabeth and Zachariah who were told that their son would prepare the way um, for the Messiah. And so their situation didn't make sense. And if you didn't get um, to hear, you weren't here last week, or you didn't get to watch the message, I would encourage you to, to go do that as um, he kicked us off. But he, was, he talked about how the angel of the Lord spoke to them and said, you're going to have a son. And these guys were pretty old, okay? And Zechariah was a prophet, and he, was, he went into the temple and um, heard from God for the first time they had God had spoken in 400 years, okay? So he hears this message from God that you're going to have um, a baby, your wife is going to get pregnant, and he can't, he's, I mean, the doubt, the, like, amount of um, how old they were was just, it didn't make sense in their situation, and their scenario, and so he doubted, and it literally says that the angel said, now you won't be able to talk until it happens, and so he comes out of hearing from God for the first time ever in that generation for 400 years, nobody had heard from him, and then he comes out, and they won't let him talk. The angel won't let him talk. God shuts him up. How crazy would that be if you're like, "Mm, God told me a really big secret and I can't say anything. So, um, did it make sense? But God was preparing and working behind the scenes. And God always is preparing and working behind the scenes with the people in the story. And we see in the Old Testament, um, in, in Malachi 3, here's one of the, the prophetic promises um, about the coming Messiah and about this messenger that's going to prepare the way. In Malachi 3, it says, look, I'm sending a messenger. He's going to prepare the way before me. Talking about Elizabeth and Zechariah's son, John, that was coming and then the Lord you're seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you look for so eagerly is surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. And so we see this promise um, that is this prophetic promise that is given hundreds of years before. And so the Old Testament is full of prophetic promises that were given. And literally this is just concerned. Whenever like stats are out there, just know I usually go low because I think like I don't want to, you know, overwhelm you with like a made-up stat. So um, they say conservatively, okay, so conservative estimates are in the Old Testament, there's over 300 promises that Jesus fulfilled in his lifetime. So that's just a conservative estimate. That is crazy, okay? Um, And so that is just one conservative thing, estimate that um, confirmed prophecies, over 300 that Jesus fulfilled. And so we're going to dive into one of those today in a little bit, but we're diving into part two of the I'm Dreaming series, and we're talking about when God gives us a dream, how he confirms it. And when God lines stuff up, he confirms it. When he plants a dream in our heart, he confirms it. And so um, today I'm going to be diving into that, but before we dive into that, I just have a super confession I want to make. Um, When it comes to dreams, I actually hate dreaming, (laughs) Right? And I got asked to preach on it. Um, Isn't that funny? Uh, No. So I hate, like, the, well, I'm supposed to be sleeping, dreaming. Anybody else with me, like, hate dreaming? Some, I don't know. There's three of us. Thank you. Um, But, yeah. No, I just, like, like, some people think it's great when you dream of, like, half men, half beasts, and Mario Kart comes in, and and then all of a sudden, you know, Hello Kitty was there. And it's like, oh, hey, and they wake up, and they want to tell you, and you're like, "Uh, what? Um, I hate that. I don't want that. I want to sleep, okay? And I just feel like I don't get, like, restful sleep when I dream. So um, that's why I hate dreaming. I really don't enjoy it. My dreams don't make sense either. And I know, like, I remember in high school and psychology or whatever, they're like, try this trick. And we're supposed to practice it. You know, like, wake up in the morning, and then you're supposed to drink a glass of water and then journal immediately what you dreamed or something. And, like, I mean, the psychologist, everybody can tell me, but, like, if you're a therapist, whatever, you probably can help me. Um, But I don't care, you know? I just, I don't want to dream. I want to sleep. I'm there to sleep. I'm there to get the job done. And so it feels like it's not um, really relaxing to me or sleeping. And then again, yeah, I remember half or a quarter. So if I were to tell you what I dreamed, I'm like, oh, something about, uh, doesn't really make sense. So 
Here's the other truth that this gets even, this gets even more serious. So uh, please don't be offended by this, but I actually, even more than that, I don't like hearing about your dreams. <laughs> So I'm going to be honest, okay, and like I'm talking to all of you, so you can all be mad at me, but like I don't want to hear about it, you know? Anybody else with me? You're like, ah, nobody else. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, I just don't like, I just, again, because you probably remember half or you remember a quarter of it, and then you're going to try to tell it to me, and then all of a sudden somebody's like really getting into it, and about halfway through their conversation, me and them, and I'm like, wait, are you still, oh, you're st- is still a dream or is this real? And they're like, no, 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 yeah, still my dream. And I'm like, okay, well, gosh, I felt like we were starting to get personal here. And like, you know, they're like, I had a dream about you. And then they go on and they're like kind of offended by you. And you're like, I don't know if there's something I'm supposed to do about it. Do you want me to like, ah. So I actually don't really like hearing about people's dreams. Um, and so literally they start talking and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. <sighs> don't show it on my face. You know, like, oh yeah, that's really cool. No. Um, So now I've said it. Now I feel like we can move on. But um, I actually, good news today for you is I love talking about God dreams. I love when God plays his dreams in our heart. Love that. Like that's my jam, okay? I love talking about that. And so that's where we're diving into today. But some of you in this place as we dive in, and maybe we're here last week as we kicked off, but maybe God has placed a dream in your heart or in your life and you've kind of put it on the shelf. And maybe the, the worries or the like what ifs started to pile up or just the maybe like Zachariah, you had some questions and you had some doubt and you're like, um, how can this be? I don't understand. Um, this doesn't make sense. And so maybe you've kind of shelved it and, and now those things have been piling up. But today we're going to talk about if it's a God dream, he's going to confirm it. He will confirm it. And um, I love as we dive in, we're going to dive in now more to the Christmas story with a couple that you may be familiar with. Maybe not. Maybe they're new to you, but they were engaged to be married and Joseph and Mary is their name. So we're going to dive in Luke 1. This is the Gospel Luke story, um, or their Gospel Luke account of the birth of Jesus being foretold. And so it says in Luke 26, or in verse 1, 26, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David, says, Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman, which, I mean, all of this would probably be kind of crazy. Um, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. And it says, Mary, confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think about what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great, and he'll be called the son of the most high. And this promise keeps coming. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever, and his kingdom will never end. And so we see this encounter that Mary has in the book of Luke that she has with the angel of the Lord Gabriel. And the angel says to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. So this story is beautiful, okay? And many of us have maybe, maybe you've heard this at a Christmas Eve service, and there's candlelight, and the Lights are all back there, and it's just beautiful, and there's soft keys playing, and we're reading it, and it's just such a nostalgic, like, incredible moment in our faith, obviously, but, like, sometimes that, sometimes we take the humanness out of it, and it's like, wow, this special, incredible moment that Mary was promised a son, but, like, think about how her life has forever changed, okay? We're going to talk about just a little bit, just the humanness of a Mary and of a Joseph in the midst of this, in the midst of this promise, this confirmation, this dream that God's given them, and we see these, um, these words. So first of all, the scripture says that Mary was a virgin, okay? And so um, I would imagine she was engaged to be married. I would imagine she's had probably the talk. Her family has had the talk. Anybody remember um, trying to maybe give your kids the talk or that awkward time when your parents or a loved one tried to give you the talk? Yeah, um, super awkward, right? Um, I... Uh, last night I didn't realize my mom was here until I started talking about this and she was right there. Um, So that got real. Uh, But I remember when she tried to give me the talk and um, when I was in high school, I ended up um, going and deciding that I wanted to speak to other high schoolers on a topic called abstinence. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the health classes and they let you come in and talk about different perspectives. And so I'm like, I'll bring that one in. And so 
Um, super kind of random for a high school senior to think like, this is going to be awesome to go talk to other people about this. So, um, so I did. And um, I still get to do it. I actually still get to go to Sartell. And I get to speak usually in their 10th grade health class, which is so fun. Um, but here's what's funny, okay? So when it comes to the talk, I remember um, when I was youth pastoring, I would sub at the middle school sometimes for their lunchroom supervisor. They'd let me come in. And this happened two years in a row, and I must have just taken the sub job. Um, after the first year, I think I remember like, oh, I'm going to do this this day. So here's what happens. And maybe they've changed it, but in fifth grade, they typically give the talk. So if you have a fifth grader, I'm just warning you. Um, they typically give the talk, it seems like, the day before Christmas break. And so the day that they're leaving. And so, um, and they give it right before lunchtime. So um, there I was, and th the whole class, the fifth graders, I don't know if they split up girls and guys or whatever, but I um, came in to do lunch duty the first time. You know, I walk in and I'm like, hey guys, and they're all just walking towards the lunchroom, just look like they've literally watched their dog get hit by the bus. Um, they're just shocked. They're like, I'm like, how are you guys doing? And I didn't know what happened. So I'm like, how are you guys doing? They're like, not okay. We're not okay. And I mean, I would literally go to table after table and you'd watch. It just, there was like a silence in the lunchroom after these kids have been given the talk. They walk in and I know it was like a very anatomy based, whatever, you know, so very, but they walk in with their tray and they're just like, little zombies. And I'd literally every table and I was like, how are you guys doing today? It's not good. They told us some stuff, and it is not good. I'm like, okay. So um, some of the brave ones would like go into it a little bit with me, and I'm like, wow, yeah, that, ooh, that would be a lot to take in before lunchtime um, for these fifth graders. But I imagine, um, and I, so just a warning if they still do it, it's genius on the teacher's parts, you know, like, hey, send them off to just Merry Christmas. Talk to your parents about that. Um, now the whole like story of Mary and Joseph has a whole new meaning to them. Um, and so, but imagine for Mary's life, back to her life, like, so she says in here, like, first of all, she's confused and disturbed. Secondly, um, he's like, you found favor. You'll conceive and give birth to a son. And later on, we find in her story, she's like, how can it be? I've not been with a man. So she's like, hey, I have a question. And then, um, and then we see this incredible faith in her that's like, okay, so be it. Like, if this is what God wants, this is where I'm at. But can you imagine for her the realness of um, her finding out she's pregnant and now um, probably getting shamed for getting pregnant or probably getting questioned or doubted like she cheated on Joseph? Um, how many people would attack her reputation? How many would look at maybe her family with disgrace? Um, just the, the humanness of what she's walking through and how she has to face this. And as we see God has spoken through this angel to Mary, I'd imagine that she still had questions, even when she said, like, okay, like, so be it. I'll do it. Like, if this is what God wants. I would imagine that still didn't clear up all her questions. You know what I'm saying? And then now to think that it wasn't only her affected, but now Joseph. Mary has to tell him that she's pregnant. Like, oh, hey, and um, it's actually not your baby. And he's like, yeah, no, duh, uh, obviously. Um, but don't worry, it's God's. You know, like, I mean, the story keeps getting a little, like, harder to probably wrap your head around. And so we see, um, here's where kind of Joseph's uh, version is kind of where he's brought into the story. In Matthew 1, 18, this is Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew's account. And it says, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. So because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, so here's just some little clues about him. It says, because he was a righteous man, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. So he had made in, in, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And so we see this promise, this confirmation, literally in a dream to Joseph. God confirms it. But here's what we know about Joseph, okay? So let's go to his humanness. Here's what we know about him. Let's dive into him. We know just by the genealogy that's given in Matthew 1, uh, before some of these verses, we know that he is uh, 41 generations from Abraham, okay? So that's like 40th cousin twice removed or something, you know? I go with second cousin or something, third cousin, whatever. But this is, um, he's, he's related to Abraham. And then 27 generations from King David, okay? 
And so um, also we see in verse 19, it says that he was a righteous man, and which just means he was in right standing with God. Um, he was about 20 years old. He was engaged to be married. He was a carpenter. And so these are just some things that we know about him. But honestly, we don't know a ton about Joseph. Uh, we don't know where he was born. We don't know how he met Mary, how they met. We don't know how their families knew each other. There's not another like distinguishing like big quote in the Bible explaining him, telling us about him. But the last we hear about him, this is like his last big, uh, what he's known for is in Luke 2. So imagine being um, put down for this. In Luke 2, 41, every year his parents, meaning Jesus, so this is after Jesus comes, every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to custom. And after the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. So Luke records this story of Joseph to just say, hey, let me just let you know, Joseph lost Jesus, right? So like, I mean, Joseph, he's he's a righteous man, loves the Lord, and he loses Jesus. So, and then it says, thinking he was in their company, they traveled for a day. So they kept going. Anybody been there? (laughs) You just left a kid behind? Um, some of you do, and we, we usually return them back, right? You know, but um, I do love when parents, like, kind of make that walk of shame, and they're, like, come back from their car, and, like, you just have one more. Like, oh, like a child? Okay. Um, sure, take them. So, um, thinking he was in their company, they kept traveling. They began looking for him among their relatives, friends, anybody seen Jesus? And then when they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, okay? So, I mean, I've, like lost my, one of my daughters in like my sight for a few seconds. But like after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. So Joseph is <clears throat> one of the biggest stories we know about him is he's responsible for losing Jesus. And so can you imagine that prayer that like for, for parents or people, if you lose a child, you're like, oh God, like the instant panic that sets in. Can you imagine Joseph and, and God's conversation of like, huh, oh God, okay. Um, <clears throat> so Lord, I lost your son, the one that you gave us. You know, I lost Jesus and um, he's the savior of the world and I know you have big plans for him. And so if there's any way you can help us find him, or if you got another plan, um, you know, just this incredible like moment in history that we find. But I can't imagine uh, for him what that must have felt like. So more than that, though, um, here's some more details we know about him. We can assume that he died before Jesus started his public ministry. But there's really, again, not a lot of details about his life. So we can assume, though, that he probably died before Jesus was 30. That's when he began his public ministry because every um, story about Jesus where his mother is involved in there, we see that she seems to be alone. And so wherever Mary's mentioned, she seems to be alone. So some of these things are just scholars that put them together and said we assume that at some point in his life, um, in Jesus' life before he turned 30, his father died. So there's not a ton mentioned about his earthly father, but we see evidence of his impact throughout scripture. We know that he was a righteous man, that God chose him to play a huge role in Jesus' life here on earth. He chose him to confirm a dream that he had placed and given to uh, Mary and, and his plan throughout to save the world. So here's what scripture says about the big formative years of Jesus' childhood. It literally says this statement, and this is probably the time that Joseph was around raising him, basically. It just says in Luke 2, 52, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. That's all it says, but Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and man. And we know, I would imagine that that didn't happen by accident. I would imagine that his father and his mother's impact and influence in his life was huge in shaping the life of the Messiah. So back to his life, though, before Jesus. We know this. He was 20 years old. He was in his prime. He had a good job. He was ready to get married. His plans were set in motion. And then he finds out that she's pregnant. And it's not his. He's headed in one direction, has his life planned out, and life kind of throws him a curveball. But we can know this when we're walking through that. As we talk about dreaming God's dreams, Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like life's rolling and then all of a sudden curveball comes or things are headed in one direction? We can know this, that when God plants a dream in our heart, that there is gonna be opposition. 
Maybe it's the fear, maybe it's the questions, maybe it's the doubts, maybe it's other people's questions of like, uh, how could that be? I don't really understand that. Or um, maybe it's all of those things or the situation that you're up against that just doesn't seem like it will be. And so Doug's gonna dive in next week more to talking about the opposition and how God protects our dreams. But we see back in Joseph's life that he's ready to start off life. He finds out his girlfriend's pregnant. He's not the father. Um, I would imagine this is quite a situation to be in. So in Matthew 119, we see, again, Joseph's response. It says, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, he, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. And so this shows us, honestly, like this is how he was feeling. This is, he had made up his mind. It says he had in mind to divorce her quietly. That was his plan. But this shows us that he probably didn't believe Mary. So when she came to him, he wasn't like, oh, wow, this is incredible. Wow, great news. It shows that he probably was like, mm, not buying it. I don't understand. I don't see it. I don't um, see it like you do. And so it says that he was going to divorce her quietly. We see the weight of his emotions and we see the direction that they're taking him in. That was his plan and that's where he was headed. So know this, if God's got a dream he, for you and your life, if he's spoken maybe a dream to you or you feel like maybe he has and you're still kind of in the wandering um, stage, He's going to confirm it. Despite the feelings or the opposition or the questions, if it's a God dream, he's going to confirm it. Have you ever made up your mind on something where you're like, I'm just, this is my plan, this is how it's going to go, this is what I'm going to do, and then maybe God steps in. And so let's read again. It says in Matthew 1, 20, but after he'd considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And so we see this incredible moment where Joseph had made up his mind, and then God speaks to him in a dream. An angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream. And we see he hears from God, and it changes his direction. It instantly confirms what God's doing, and it changes his direction. And in verse 24, it says, When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary as his wife. When he woke up, not after a few days or after he'd um, talked to some people and worked it out and talked through it, it literally says when he woke up, he instantly did something. He did what the angel of the Lord had told him. He headed in a different direction as God had led him. So dreams can be scary, and they can be scary to share, especially if you feel like it's maybe a God dream, and you're like, this is something I feel like the Lord's laid on my heart, and whew, I don't, it's hard to share some of those really close um, things with other people sometimes, because they end up being big statements of faith, or they're big steps of like, okay, I'm gonna kind of claim this, and like, I feel like maybe this is what God's doing, but again, even for Mary and Joseph, this didn't make sense. This didn't always line up. Um, so, for me, ever since I was in high school, I felt like God, that God laid a dream on my heart to someday adopt. And um, so I was in high school, right? It just, my parents wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> so I remember telling them, like, we should adopt, you know. Um, I was the youngest of, I have two older brothers, and I always would ask my mom for a girl, like, can I have a sister, can I have a sister? And she'd say, um, well, that's not really how it works, um, but I was like, well, adoption, but because um, she said, you know, if we try again, there could be another boy, and I was like, oh, dear God, uh, don't do it. Let's adopt. So, but I had felt for years that, like, the Lord had just placed this dream in my heart. Um, many of my favorite people, just people I love, favorite humans, I feel like adoption is just woven into their stories, and it's incredible. So, here I was in high school feeling like God laid this on my heart. I knew I was going to cry, so you're probably going to too. Sorry if you cry when other people cry. Here we go. Um, but there I was in college. Still didn't seem like a great time to adopt. Um, but literally, I was like, okay, God, I don't, you placed this in my heart. Then I came here to the waters after college. Um, and then I, I call it the years of dating drought, okay? Um, there was just nothing going on in the dating scene for me. And so um, for like eight years. Um, so I was, woohoo, like single, ready to mingle. Um, but nothing was going on. So 
Again, like this incredible dream that I felt like got a place in my heart, but I was like, I don't really know what to do with it. So if you don't know this about me, I'm an activator. I love to do stuff. If we're just standing around in a group and you're like, we're, we're thinking we should all go do this. And I'm like, like right now, let's go, you know. And so when the Lord spoke to me, I felt like, okay, God, like now? Is it now? Is it yet? Is it now? Whatever. And so um, I waited on the adoption dream and we kept waiting on that. And then... Um, the Lord clearly had some other plans and just some other orders of doing things. I love to plan my life. I love to plan things out. And God had different ways of going about things. So in uh, 2015, my husband and I got married. Some students introduced us. He's a teacher at the high school. And some students said, you should date our math teacher. And I was like, you guys are weird. And then I met their math teacher. And I was like, I should date your math teacher. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> you guys are not wrong. So um, for once, they weren't wrong. So I dated their math teacher. And I married him. Um, which is incredible. And so um, that's a long story short, but as we began to talk about building a family together, I had shared with him um, my dream to adopt. And again, not really knowing like what to do with it, but I'm like, hey, here's the thing. And I just feel like I really um, am called to adopt. And like for me, it didn't feel like a like suggestion. It kind of felt like a mandate. And so I'm just going to tell you that. And my poor husband, I mean, the amount of ideas that I throw at him, like on a weekly basis, um, he's always like, okay, okay. Um, so he takes them all in, and, and he's like the most content man in the world. So he's like, I mean, if his life didn't change ever, he'd be fine with it. And I'm like, woo, let's get this party going, you know? And so I just said, like, I just feel like this is um, what God's speaking to me and for us, you know? And he was like, okay. And that was pretty much it. And so we just kind of left it at that of like, all right, well, we'll just see, right? We'll just see what God has. And so um, probably a month or so later, Nick um, shared with me that he had a dream, right? Dangerous, because I don't like them. I don't really enjoy dreams. And I don't like when people tell me theirs. Um, so I'm like, okay. Um, but he just said that he had a dream and there was, we were in bed with two little kiddos and there was laughing and we were playing and there was so much love there. And then he said like instantly, he knew that they were our kids through adoption. And like, so then I'm like, okay, God, sweet. Now you, you actually do speak to some people through dreams. Just don't do it to me. Um, but how cool just an instant confirmation for my husband that all of a sudden he knew like, okay, this is, this is a confirmation to what God's placed in her heart and now God's confirming it to me. And so he, as he told me about this, it was like, holy cow, wow, like, God, you do work in such cool ways, in unique ways. And, and here's something I would just want to encourage you. God knows you. He knows like, you, the details, he's in the small details, and I do believe that, like, he knew not to speak to me that way, because I would probably be mad about it, or I'd forget it, or I wouldn't, whatever, but he knew that he could speak to my husband and get his attention that way, and I love that God just can do that, and he's so unique to each one of us, and his, our relationships with him can be so unique, and so, again, my husband had this dream, and the first thing was that there was just this confirmation, this instant confirmation in his heart. When he woke up, he just was settled. His mind, his heart was settled of like, okay, I know that God's calling us to do that. And I know that what my wife has dreamed about, like, I know God's going to line it up. So that was just so huge because it was something that I couldn't have like forced. I couldn't have conjured up. I couldn't have talked him into. I couldn't have like made him see my side. Um, it was an instant God moment for him. And so the second thing, though, is the timing of it all. And we don't know all the answers. I felt like we just knew the next steps. So we knew that, I knew that, like, we could start moving in this direction. And so we started walking out the adoption process. I was finally able to activate, which is just, like, what I love. And so we started moving, and we did the paperwork and the home study approval and the fingerprints and all of the things we had half our money down we made um our books and we were ready to go live on the website and um and then I had to call our agency and say hang on a second I actually found out I'm pregnant and so um curveball okay and an awesome curveball but didn't know um that was coming and so I mean I know how it works because I could do the talk stuff um so I didn't like I kind of saw it coming a little you know but um we don't get into it but so I get it. Um, however, just complete curveball from what direction I felt like God had us going down. 
And then another curveball, if you know our story, surprise, it's twins. And so there's two of them. And I remember people always ask me, like, wow, what did you, what did you think when they, you found out there was two? And I was like, well, you know, we were there and, like, having the ultrasound. And um, the ultrasound tech said, um, are you guys using fertility drugs? And I was like, it's a weird question. I've never had an ultrasound. So I was like, nope. Just, you know, thought maybe they checked that off. And she's like, okay. Well, there is two of them. And my husband said, what did she say? And, uh, and instantly I was like, she said there's two. There's two of them. Like, get your ears checked. You know, like, come on. Um, and so instantly I was like, holy crap. Um, the two of everything, you know, two cribs, two whatever. And, um, and then I literally, my next thought was like, I actually love to be surprised. And I love like when I just don't see it coming. And I literally felt like the Lord was like, gotcha. And I, thought, and I literally remember thinking, you got me good. You got me real good. Didn't have a clue this was coming. So, wow, twins, okay? But God knows. Um, and now we know <laughs> that twins run in my family. So I remember calling my mom later on when we told it all and we talked. And I was like, what the heck, mom? You know, and she's like, you know, now that you say it, there are a lot of twins in the family. Um, and she like listed like five sets. And I was like, could have been cool to put that together before. So um, now we know. But here's, here's where we're at now. We're still dreaming. We're still waiting. Um, but we know God's still working, and he'll keep confirming. And here's just one way that he does that, and I love how he does that just uniquely to us. In September, um, Nick and I were up at Lake Geneva at a prayer and fasting retreat um, that we go to as a staff. And Nick got to come up with me this year, and it was super cool. This is our camp that we love. And so... Um, prayer and fasting, we're up there. And we'd been talking about our next steps and um, had been thinking about going back um, up live on the adoption stuff and getting, but there was, this was two-year gap, so we had to get stuff reapproved and, um, and kind of go through some different steps or whatever. And so we were moving on those, but then literally it was kind of, ball was in our court. And so we had gotten all of our stuff, but then we kind of had to tell our agency, like, okay, we're ready. We're ready to be kind of put out there now. And so um, I was thinking about stuff. I was praying about stuff, praying that God would keep confirming things and that um, he would just give me a, I just literally felt like, okay, God, when you kind of give me this piece, I'm going to email our social worker and just ask her uh, more details and tell her we're ready to go. And so, again, had some questions, was still kind of in the waiting and figuring stuff out. And then this is how I know God speaks to me, or this is one way he speaks to me. So he speaks to my husband in dreams, uh, but he speaks to me through ice cream. And so, um, for food. And I know some of you got hooked up on the, like, prayer and fasting retreat. Um, but you're going to need to get over that. So there we were at prayer and fasting retreat. After we were done fasting, we ended it with ice cream. So, because that's how we roll. So we were up in Alexandria, and we went to um, Tip Top Dairy Bar in Osakis. If you have not been there, it is cool. Little piece of heaven. Um, I love it. So we were there. Um, some of us on the team went on a random Tuesday night at 9 p.m., okay? Um, and this is literally the last night that this place is open for the season and all this stuff. And so, and like they're trying to shut down and we just want our ice cream. So um, we get there and um, again, I'd been praying about our adoption, our next steps, what God would have. And then again, I was going to email our social worker. Um, our agency is in Fargo, North Dakota. And so in walks our social worker at 9 p.m. on a Tuesday night when I just want ice cream. <laughs> so, um, but how cool is God? Because literally she walks in and I'm like kind of mind blown here thinking like, you live in Fargo. We are in Osakis, which is a little podunk town and um, kind of a gap between them. And it's Tuesday night. And, and I thought, like, gosh, that looks like Katie, but I don't know. And so I, like, elbow Nick, and I'm like, I, th I think that's our social worker. And so, um, of course, we realized it was. And so I got to ask her some of my questions and um, just instantly was able to just know that God had just a piece for our next steps to keep moving forward. And here's just what I love. Like, he's in the details, and he's working in the waiting, and he is all about confirming things, and he will confirm things if he's placed dreams in your heart. He will confirm. And I love how he knows uniquely to us how to speak to each one of us. And so, again, I'm one of those people that loves to be surprised. I love a good, like, didn't see it come, a good kind of surprise. Like, I don't want you to scare me around the corner. You know, I don't like to be scared. I love to be surprised. I love when it's the, 
the, you know, you want a new car. I mean, I've never done that, but um, I've won a free trip. That was awesome. Or like a friend from out of state or a family member from out of state comes and shows up at your door. I mean, the like, you didn't see it coming kind of surprises. I love those. And here's what I think. It's because honestly, I think for me, I'm a planner. I like to have things figured out. I like to, this is my next step and this is my next step. And here, God, if you can kind of work this way, that would be awesome. And I love when he um, knows, I love the scripture that says his ways are so much higher than ours. Like um, I get to see evidence of two little girls that run around our house all the time and know, okay, God, you had a, you had a really cool surprise for us, but also I get to see and know that he's still working and he still um, has confirmed other dreams in our life and in our heart. And so I love and know that he's got surprises for you and he knows how to surprise you and he wants to surprise you with his love, with his plans, with his dreams for you and your family, maybe your job, your heart, your finances, your legacy, whatever it may be. And here's something for me. There's three ways that God is, this is just super practical, but there's three ways that God has confirmed things or I feel like I've seen him repeatedly confirm things to other people or myself. And the first one is through his word. So if God's laying something on your heart and you're like, I'm not really sure and I don't really know what to do with this or I feel like this is something like the first thing I always encourage people is like, does it line up with his word? Does it make sense with his word? Is it, I mean, if it's contrary to his word, then guess what? You can probably let that one go, okay? Uh, But if it lines up with his word, that is one way that he uses um, to confirm with us what he's doing, okay? It's gotta line up with scripture. The second way is he uses his people. And again, there's, there's moments where God confirmed something to Nick. We see God confirm a dream in a dream to Joseph. We, God confirmed with our social worker, just randomly. I mean, God confirms and can line things up with his people, and he uses each one of us, which is a really cool thing to get to be a part of, to just all of a sudden be like, wow, I had no idea, but God was confirming something to you. I love that. Um, But he uses his people. And then the third way is he brings his peace. The Holy Spirit, Scripture talks about, is called the comforter, the advocate, other names for the Holy Spirit. But in John 14, it says, Jesus is telling his disciples this, and he says, I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that's the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and he'll remind you of everything that I've told you. And I love this part. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift. It's a peace of mind and heart. And it's a peace I give. The peace I give is this gift that the world cannot give. I love when God uses his Holy Spirit to line things up because he literally brings this peace that the world cannot duplicate. And he says, so don't be troubled or afraid. And I remember when he said that to Mary. He said, don't be troubled or afraid. But God uses this peace to line things up. And you see it even in the story of Joseph and Mary where they say, okay, we don't understand, but let it be. Um, Where Joseph changes his direction after he has this peace from God. And it's hard in life not to be ruled by our emotions. Our feelings are very real. But I love that Jesus promises a peace that the world can't give and that the world cannot duplicate. And there is these, it's this anchor, it's this hope, it's this joy, there's this emotion that the world cannot ever even duplicate or come close to. It's like being in the sweet spot with the Lord. It's this trust that he's got you and that he's holding you firm and he won't let you go. So now we're here in the waiting, we're in, in the in-between, and last night after I preached, some people were like, oh, I thought you were gonna like tell us, you know, like, wow, and now you're adopting, and there's this child, and I was like, no, I mean, I wish, that'd be really cool, but it's also cool that God just can bring a peace and can say, I got this, and that we could be like, okay, trust in you. So, here's my encouragement in the waiting for confirmation or in the waiting after he's confirmed in the dream. We gotta trust his truth over the emotion. And I love scripture. I love the promises that we can hold on to. And my life verse is Proverbs 16, nine, and it says, in a man's heart, he plans his steps, but the Lord 
or a man's heart, he plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. And that has been something for the planner, the activator in me that has just been a truth that I have held on to of like, okay, God, I've seen it time and time again. So sometimes now I'm like, you think I would get the hint and just stop planning. Uh, But I'm like, I'll keep going. And then you just keep changing them. Um, You keep giving me curveballs. But I love the promise that we can have and this like peace that can come that in our hearts we can plan our way, but God determines our steps. Another one is God's not an author of confusion. So if you're walking through a situation and you're like praying for peace or you're trying to, if the situation doesn't make sense or whatever, I would encourage you that God, he doesn't orchestrate and just bring up confusion. He wants to bring his peace. And it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. That's the promise that we hold on to. Another one is that he can bring good out of bad situations. He doesn't cause the bad situations, but in Romans 8, 28, it says, in all things, he works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. So in all things, he works for the good. So he can bring good out of those situations that we walk through. And the last promise that I just wanna give you is John 16, 33. It's in this life, you will have trouble but take heart of overcome the world. God doesn't promise us life without curveballs. He doesn't promise us that when we serve him and when we uh, live for him, that it's just gonna be perfect. But he says, he'll be with us. He will walk with us to our final destination. And I think it's more important the direction that you're heading in than where you're at right now. And so we see Joseph change his direction. We see people change their direction when God speaks, when he confirms. And Matthew, Again, 124, it says, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and he took Mary as his wife. When we were up at prayer and fasting, um, the speaker, one of the speakers there was Choco de Jesus and he is a phenomenal pastor, preacher. Um, He's awesome. But I remember him saying this about just obedience. Um, He said these simple words. He said, when we're walking through a situation, he said, understanding can wait, obedience cannot. And um, I'm sure Joseph had questions. I'm sure he had some serious questions in his heart, in his life. Um, I'm sure the dream didn't answer them all. But we see him step out after hearing from God, hearing this confirmation, we see him step out in obedience. If you guys wanna stand with me, uh, we're gonna get ready to go into this last song. But before we go into it, I feel like there's maybe hearts in this place that maybe are one of three ways and these are just the um, prayers that I wanna pray over people. Uh, But if you'd maybe just bow your head and just close your eyes for respect for those around you. I just, I know that there's people in this place that maybe you have put your God dream kind of back on the shelf and you've just thought, you know what, God, maybe that wasn't from you. And you're like, I just, the emotions, the doubt, whatever it's, the feelings, but you're, you would be honest enough to say, I do think right now, like, I just, I need God to confirm it. I'm willing to take it back off and God, like, I just need you to surprise me, confirm it, whatever that may be. If I can think of you or pray for you um, in this next song, you can just raise your hand. I would love to think of, yeah, there's so many hearts in this place. Okay. Maybe you're in this room and you just know that you gotta open your heart back up to dreaming and back up to whatever God wants to speak to you and whatever he wants to um, do in your life. And you would say, maybe maybe for whatever reason, what you've walked through, but maybe you've kind of closed your heart off to some of that. And you would just say like, I'm just like, I need God's Holy Spirit to come in and speak. I need um, his heart or his spirit to just soften. Um, if that's you and you just say like, just pray for me that God would just soften my heart and help me hear from him. If I could just think of you and pray for you in this time, if you just lift your hand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. There's a lot of us that just need to hear from him. And then lastly, I do think that there's people in this place that God has confirmed something to you and you know you need to step out and he's confirmed it and you're like, okay, so I'm just kind of standing here with the like, the fear and I just need the courage to step this out. I just need the courage to take this next step. I know God's got it, but I need this courage and this peace. And so I just need the step to obey. Again, obedience Understanding can wait, obedience cannot. Understanding will come, but obedience can't wait. So if I can think of you and pray for you that you'd be able to just step out if you just lift your hand. I'd love to know that there's hearts in this place that are knowing that God's given them a dream. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's pray. God, I thank you for um, the lives and the stories and the hearts in this place, God, that you're moving in 
God, I, I love that you're always up to more than we think, God, and even when we can't see it, I know you're working. And so, God, I lift up hearts right now, God, that just um, need to take that dream off the shelf, and Lord, they're asking for you to confirm. God, for you to surprise them with your love, with your truth, God, with your plans, with your ways, God, that are so much higher than ours. So, Lord, I pray for confirmation for hearts in this place today. And then, Lord, I lift up those that are in the middle, God, and in the, in the spot where, Lord, they just need to have hearts that are soft to you and, and they want to hear from you, God. I just pray that uh, for those that are in that place, Lord God, to say, I, I want to dream again. I want him to speak, but God, give me ears to hear. Lord, would you do that work in their hearts? Would you soften? Would you um, speak in ways to them that only you can? And then, Lord, I lift up those, God, even that are just knowing that they're supposed to step out now. God, I pray that you would give them the courage and the boldness to step out and to walk it out, Lord. And you, I love that you say you'll bring a peace that the world can't duplicate. So God, in the confirmation stage, as you've confirmed, Lord God, now I pray just for their hearts to, to let go of trying to understand it, trying to figure it all out, God, but their hearts to just simply obey. God, in these next few moments of this last song, God, before we leave this place, would you confirm, would you seal up, would you speak, would you encourage, God, would you bring your peace in these next moments? We just give you this time. Just what you say that you're 
hearts, God, the work that you're doing. Would you confirm, God, that you're working in the waiting, God, whether whether um, hearts are waiting on you, God, or whether they're waiting on you for a dream or whether they're waiting on you for next steps, whatever it may be, Lord, I pray that as people leave this place today, Lord, that you would remind them, that you see them, that you notice them, Lord God, that we would have testimonies just of, of you confirming, or even for those that are stepping out in obedience, God, we would have testimonies of your blessing, your favor, your hand, God, as we step out into those next steps that you're calling us to. So God, we, we leave this place expecting you to show up, God, and I think that's the coolest spot we can live and be is waiting on you. So Lord, I pray that you would speak to hearts, God, that you would solidify the work that you're doing in each one of us in a special way, even in this, these moments, in this next week, whatever it may be, God, that you would work in ways that only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us this morning. Just a reminder, if you want uh, more information on the prayer team, there's a meeting. You can head towards the fireside. <laughs>